Our next, our next innovator is ready to go. He's a chief technology officer at Captio. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Ragnar Fjallnison. Hi, everyone. My name is Ragnar. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Captio, and we provide the next generation travel CRM and booking platform built on Salesforce. So Captio started out as a Salesforce consulting partner. We transitioned into building a product on top of Salesforce, specifically for travel agencies and tour operators, and have since stopped doing consulting and focused purely on our product development. We are now 19 people across four offices and a key management team now in place uh, with both strong travel experience as well as technology. So <clears throat> during our consulting days, we spent a lot of time with travel agencies and tour operators that were really frustrated. They wanted to improve the way that they engage with their customers. They wanted to improve the way they engage with their suppliers. And we saw that the core booking systems in place simply weren't compatible with the needs of a modern travel company. So that's why we decided to build Captio, a platform that transforms the way that you deal with your suppliers, your distributors, as well as your end customers. It's a solution that helps the travel company sell, service, market in an entirely new way and innovate processes much, much faster than ever before. So today, I want to share with you how a sales agent working for a tour operator would interact with his end customer on a high-value, tailored-made package. So the, tour op the customer sends in an inquiry through the tour operator's website and ends up in Captio, and the sales agent is able to create a simple package or a complex package using content and using inventory that's either preloaded directly into our backend or hooked up through a third-party GTS or aggregator. Now, it's very easy for the sales agent to track uh, the profitability of each itinerary, as well as change markup of individual components. When the sales agent is happy with his quote, he sends out a co uh, branded output to the customer, which he can quickly preview just before he sends it out as an email with a link in it. And the whole point is here that the proposal or the quote that's sent to the customer it's fully interactive. It has all the imagery and all the content connected to, the, to this specific holiday. So the customer opens up the page, and he can see a very detailed quote, a landing page just for, for him, essentially, but just for this specific holiday and his group. He can, get, uh, he can drill down into imagery. He can drill down into location. And he can even interact with the sales agent through the page using our commenting system. So we're trying to connect the process more into the same page and into the same engagement with the customer. He can also click the Ready to Book button, provide payment information, and be on his way to paying his deposit and to go on his holiday. Now, we believe that this kind of engagement, and this was just the quoting part of it, is a completely modern way of how you should interact with your end customer as a travel agency or a tour operator. But this also applies to the distribution part of things as well as the supplier engagement. Now, our partnership with Salesforce is built around them providing the technology stack, the platform, where we can focus on building the travel technology. Now, a lot of other partners have done very similar things in other industries. And what we want to achieve is becoming the go-to Salesforce partner for travel technology globally and help Salesforce open up this market uh, for both of us. So we've already reached quite a lot of milestones. Um, our partnership with Salesforce is growing very strongly. We've gone through their security review, which is quite extensive. Uh, we've started working with their London, Dublin, and US sales offices in business development. We've raised $3.5 million in seed financing with both US and Icelandic investors, where the company is headquartered. 
and we have the core team now in place to sort of execute our go-to-market. Now, finally, we've had the pleasure of working with some really great customers uh, in our first couple of years who really helped us shape the platform. And the best thing about these customers is that they were diverse. They're in different sub-industries of travel, which is also credit to us of how flexible the solution is and how flexible it can be deployed for each scenario. So what's ahead for, for Captio? We will continue increasing our sales effort with a focus on the mid-market tour operators and travel agency uh, sectors. That's uh, 25 to 500 employees. We'll continue building the relationship with Salesforce, in, in first of all in the English-speaking markets and then go on going to, to other markets. And continue working on sort of uh, turnkey integrations to DTSs, dynamic packaging, and more advanced enterprise features. Now finally, we want to see end of this year, or the next 12 to 18 months, we'll start to attract uh, Series A investors to really focus on the US market, which is where Salesforce is the strongest, uh, and set up some presence there. So, thank you very much. Nicely done, young man. Into the Dragons, then you go. Dragons, what do you think? App built on Salesforce. So, uh, like this was, this was pretty great until the last slide, which I'm going to come to, uh, I'm going to, come to in just a second. So the principle that you put um, a business process into salesforce.com where the overall customer relationship is being managed is an excellent for process, something I've thought about a lot uh, myself, so I commend you for doing that. The tour operator creates the quote, and it's all linked inside of Salesforce. They can track that you know, end to end. Uh, if you have the reverse analytics, so I can see how that quote was reviewed um, by the recipient. I mean, that's just an incredible thought process. So I really commend you on, uh, on building that out. Salesforce is the standout SaaS company, so doing it in their tech stack mm -hmm. makes a whole bunch of sense. Then you say there's 1.7 million potential users worldwide, which was the latent question in my mind. How big could this be for tour operators using the Salesforce platform who are probably small anyway? Um, how big could this possibly be? And then you burst my bubble with the 1.7 million users worldwide because you would have to charge each of those users a tremendous amount of money to go to a VC and get them excited about this being just a, a standout business opportunity over a few years. So that, I, I don't know if you have a view that? on that, but that, that's the part that didn't quite jive for me. Yeah, um, so our pricing is steep. It's 150 euros per user per month. That's the SaaS model. It's a similar Salesforce, uh, it's a Salesforce pricing strategy. Um, this initial focus with tour operators and travel agencies in this specific segment, you know, 25, 500, 1.7 million users. Mm -hmm. It gives us a total addressable market of around 2 billion euros mm -hmm. a year. So I think from a, from a software as a service point of view, I think it's attractive. However, this doesn't account for all of the airlines, all the cross-sellers, all the rail companies, everyone. This just counts for the, 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 the classic tour operator, the classic travel agencies. Mm -hmm. So we know the market is much bigger. This is the initial focus. Okay, I wish you luck. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, if I may, so my question to you is, so I like the Salesforce platform concept as well, so it's really putting the customer in the center. My question to you is, so are you solving one problem, but kind of like leaving the other one to back to the tour operator on the content side? So if, how much help as, are you giving to the tour operators to actually integrate to third parties in terms of getting all the content that they need and the complexity of it? I mean, in Europe, we see a lot of Pre, you know, private contracts. You know, they're, they're both loading up the content and the pricing and the inventory manually into the system. Um, you know, there, and there will always be a use case for that because that's how you get you know, purchasing power. That's how you, you know, some of the TOs keep their prices down. But um, we really believe that you need a hybrid approach. You need to blend together the private contracts with the live inventory and live content from, from the GTSs, from the aggregators. Mm -hmm. So we need to combine these worlds together help the European market a little bit catch up. And I think, you know, the US is more ready for, you know, they need the GTS right away. Um, so that's why we're, we're having a, focusing a lot on that in R&D. What's your support model? I mean, how many, you know, how, how, what's it take to implement this? And, you know, what's ongoing support? Yeah, so um, we work both with the Salesforce partners already in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, you know, the Salesforce ecosystem has grown gigantically. The partners are very advanced. Uh, you, you've got your Deloitte, your Accenture, your, your big companies, as well as sort of boutique. Uh, 
Uh, so we work, try to work as most as possible with partners. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you, Ragnar. Nice job. Well done. <laughs>